CSB owners gear to meet with the Commission of Police amidst tension between officers and operators. That's our top story in our Barbados Today morning news update for Friday, March the 23rd. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The owners of the privately run public transport vehicles are gearing up to meet with the Commissioner of Police Tyrone Griffith to try to defuse what they say is growing tension between officers and PSV operators. Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, says the operators feel they are being targeted by the police. So I find that there's a lot of tension between the PSV operator and recently the police. I don't know if you've seen a lot of these videos that have been circulated, right? Some of the PSV operators being arrested by the police officers. And so as some of them believe that they're being targeted by the police, right? So I, I believe that it's something that we will need to have to address because really, until we will not like encourage the family to cooperate with the police officers, right? And um, we will be looking forward to having the other two the Commissioner of Police and Representatives of the uh, Traffic Division and, um, you know, going forward to see how best we can work for that thing. Raphael is also again calling for greater police presence in the River Van Stand following last Monday's robbery of a PSV worker. They have a duty of care to provide the security officers or policemen in the terminal and we are going to walk to meet the authorities shortly looked at that. So one of our drivers was robbed while being in the bathroom on Monday. And that is a matter that I believe that needs to be addressed seriously. All the tension, all the issues related to the terminal, because the terminal is not supervised by police officers. We have been calling for police protection in the terminal for a long time. And we have seen that certain police come again next minute. We don't see police officers anymore. In other news now, the hierarchies of the island's two main trade unions are due to meet next week to determine what action they'll take following government's decision to abandon any further salary and wages talks and to scrap any possibility of a pay hike for public officers before the next general election. This is due by June. Now, General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, says the directive from the Prime Minister, Francis Stewart, and channeled through the Ministry of the Civil Service in a letter dated March 20, 2018, is a wishy-washy directive that still requires a full response from her union. As you would imagine, the Barbados Workers' Union could only fully respond to the correspondence which it received earlier this week following discussions and further mandate from our members and careful examination of options available to us by the Executive Council when it meets sometime next week. But by way of preliminary comment, the BWU expresses no real alarm by the message nor the manner that the message was communicated by civil service concerning the directive that it had received from the minister responsible for the civil service to only advance discussions on the basis of non-salary items. And the General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Rosin Smith, expressed disappointment at the decision to take pay increases off the table. We have submitted 22 non-salary issues and we know that they're ongoing. But in respect of the salaries, that matter would have to be referred to executive and council to await the decision. The owner of the shotgun and ammunition, which was allegedly used to carry out the brutal killing of Jason Husbands on August the 21st, 2012, yesterday testified in the murder trial of 30-year-old Kason Kimar Edwards of Gaze St. Peter. The victim was 32 years old when he was fatally shot on the Lambert's St. Lucy Road after he allegedly exited his vehicle to remove rocks which were blocking his path. Yesterday, St. Peter resident David Sylvester Ben, a monkey hunter, said he had purchased the gun and ammunition legally from another St. Peter resident, Eversley Wharton, back in 2007 for $4,500. However, he told the court that he had left home to attend a funeral 
and to go to Lime Grove one Friday evening. And when he returned home, he discovered the shotgun and 18 rounds of ammunition missing. Now the case continues on Monday before Justice Randall Worrell. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'm Professor Andrew Rose, the Central Bank of Barbados' 2018 Distinguished Visiting Fellow, and I'm delighted to be absorbing your beautiful island. Over the next few days, I'll meet and chat with different groups, and on Tuesday, March 27th, from 8.30 p.m., I invite you to converse with me and Julian Rogers on the topic, Looking Forward, How Can Caribbean Nations Respond to Global Developments, of which there are many. The conversation takes place live on CBC TV8, VOB 92.9, CBC 94.7, CMC member stations across the Caribbean, and on www.centralbank.org.bb and Facebook. It's an occasion that you should not miss. Tune in. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. Re-elected Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, has named a 13-member cabinet following his party's landslide victory at Wednesday's poll. The cabinet will be sworn in on Monday during the start of the new parliament. Meanwhile, re-appointed Attorney General Ted Roy Cutie Benjamin has announced that he will begin the process of releasing non-violent prisoners within 14 days after the commencement of Parliament and prioritize the construction of a new prison. More in this ABS News report. With the overcrowding conditions associated with Her Majesty's prison, a new facility and prisoners' release are on the agenda for the government in the new term. The country's lone penal facility, which was built to hold 150 people, now accommodates over 350 inmates. The news of a purpose-built structure is not new, but according to Attorney General Stedroy Q.T. Benjamin, it is a mandate of the government to have a facility built. The department now has three offers to build the prison. Three. We're looking at three models. There are some who are coming to BOOT, build, own, operate and transfer. We're looking at that. There are several international bodies who come to the country, understood our status, and prepared to assist us in construction. We are now looking at all of our options, and very shortly, I'll be initiating and telling you, the people, what we intend to do. But the prison will be addressed during this term. Meanwhile, in addressing the overcrowding issue, Benjamin is preparing to look at the early release of some prisoners under the Prison Extramural Sentencing Act. And on the international scene, the U.S. House of Representatives approved a $1.3 trillion spending bill on Thursday to fund federal agencies and avert a government shutdown ahead of today's deadline, sending it to the Senate despite a revolt by fiscal conservatives worried about what they called runaway spending. So, who got what? President Trump touting his $1.6 billion gain for more border security this year, but much of what he asked for in his January State of the Union address, like other immigration programs and massive funding for infrastructure, fell way short, says Reuters politics editor Karen Bohan. Some of those proposals were wrapped into this budget bill, but they're far more modest than what the president was talking about. For example, there, there is no big $1 trillion infrastructure program. There is some money for highways and roads, but it's a modest amount of money. That report from Reuters. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. 
You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.